rescue team in action. One of 27 such teams attached to the fire department of Los Angeles County. Five and a half million people in this area are dependent on their ability to act swiftly and efficiently in any emergency. This program is dedicated to rescue teams throughout the United States and to the men who risk their lives daily to save others. We will be back in a moment to bring you the story behind this exciting rescue. Jackson? The uh, Carrington contracts are in your briefcase, Mr. Jackson, in case you want to look them over before the Signal Hill conference. I sure do. Bingham's vice president uh, confirmed the meeting in Palm Springs on the afternoon of the uh, 23rd. Can't I talk to Daddy now, Mommy? We'll try to make an appointment through his secretary. Uh, Bastards has checked the sea tide oil contracts. He thinks they might raise the ante. Well, they need my pipelines worse than I need their money. Oh. Anything else I'm forgetting? Your wife. Very right long, honey. We gotta get to California in daylight. Be good now, here. Okay. Go on, boys. Bye, Dad. Thanks, Wilson. I hope you left my husband time enough to change his clothes. Well, Mr. Jackson's going to have a very busy schedule this trip, ma'am. So may I. I uh, hope you won't forget to wire West Cameron to meet us. Already done that. Good. Maybe then I'll have someone to talk to in California. Los Angeles County has 27 of these rescue rigs attached to its fire companies. Now, in them, we carry weapons to fight all kinds of disaster. And they are as many kinds of disaster as a devil can invent. Sometimes victims may be underwater, under a landslide, under a collapsed building, or a wrecked car. Or maybe they might be hung in space, like my partner up there. All right, Professor, you made your point. Get on with it, will you? <laughs> Now, boys, this is the kind of mask we use in case a victim has trouble breathing. You mean that Ian Daly Sensitator? Yeah. Well, that's right. If there's something you don't know, it's got a couple of other functions, too. Inhalator and aspirator? Hey. Would you like to join the fire department, huh? I can't, sir. I'm too young. Well, I... I guess we might struggle along a couple more years without you. Now. Sometimes to get to a victim, we have to cut our way in. We've got all kinds of torches and saws for that. Did you ever see one of these? Sibling cutting torch? Hey, maybe you'd like to come up here and show me how this works, huh? No, sir. Don't know? Yes, sir, but my dad never lets me work with open flames down at his shop. Too much of a fire hazard, you know, sir. I guess we don't have to say anything more about that, huh? No, you sure don't. Now, one of the most useful pieces of equipment that we have is a palm pier belt. Now being demonstrated by my partner, Mr. Johnson. What's palm pier mean? That's the uh, French word meaning fireman. Is Mr. Johnson French? Nope, raised right here in L.A. Then why don't you use an American belt? Now, the palm parapet belt has a snatch link on it used in ladder and rope work. Makes climbs and descents safe and sure. Anything you'd like to add to that, Mr. Johnson, before we go to the Porter Power Jack? Yeah. Who ye happen here to own the upway I'm it is? 132, Mr. Johnson. Don't worry, we have all afternoon, sir. Skip, I told you not to worry about time. We've only got 123 more pieces of rescue equipment we haven't gone into yet. Remind me to punch you in the nose one of these days. You know what time we're going to get to my house? I thought Daddy was a very understanding wife. Now, boys, I think my partner next would like to demonstrate the long handle new coal cutter. We call it a mechanical axe. 
gladly if Mr. Cameron will kindly lend me his throat. Should have been out of here an hour ago. The one day Patty plans a picnic, you have to volunteer for us to show the Boy Scouts through our rig. Well, it was a nice marriage while it lasted. Our boiled eggs can't get cold, Skip. Patty will wait for you. Us, remember? We're in this together, buddy, and this time no one backs down. I hate to disappoint you, Skip. Now look, Wes, Patty's made some special plans. Yeah, who is she? Who's who? Blind date. Well, that's not exactly what you'd call a date, Wes. She's uh, just an old friend of the family. Oh, no doubt. Oh, is that so? Well, she just happens to be a regular doll. Dressed like a nurse in general. How'd you find out? Radar, buddy, radar. Every time Patty plans an outing for the three of us, it always turns out to be the four of us. So what's wrong with widening your circle of friends? Not a thing, except the only circle Patty's got in mind is a golden wedding ring. Anyway, I can't make it. What? Take a look at this. Riley Jackson, he's messaged for flying in Texas. Want to pick up a rental car and bring it over to the airport. Can you explain Patty for me? Now he tells me. Didn't think it made that much difference, Skip. You never told me about the blind date, you know. Oh, no, this is great, just great. I can't let an old war buddy down, one who's flown all the way from Texas in a private plane. Maybe so. Or maybe you just set that wire to yourself. Jack and a chicken out of Patty's picnic. I'm not going to face the firing squad just because you suddenly remember a previous appointment. Well, now, if you're afraid to tell Patty, I'll tell her myself. Afraid? So what kind of a husband do you think I am? A little milk toast with a ring in his nose? Well, in my house, there's just one chief, and that's me. I wear the pants. Hey, Skip, your wife. Firing squad. Better put on your pants, chief. Wise guy. Hi, sweetheart. I was just going to call you. Uh, listen, Wes has got a problem. All right. You hop into your car and you follow him out to that airfield and let him deliver his friend's car. And then you bring Wes if you have to use a straitjacket. Man. Thought you said Skip's friend was just burning to meet me, huh? The best ones always take a little persuasion, Barbara. Skip did. <laughs> you can my regrets? I, uh... I told her we might be a little late. Listen, I'm gonna go to the airport with you. And you can leave word for your friend and the keys to the car, but you're not gonna wait for any airplanes. When old Riley Jackson comes flying in, you and me are gonna be on that picnic. Hmm? Orders from the chief. Riley Jackson had hit it big in the Texas oil fields. He was flying high and had acquired a wife and two sons in military school, along with a couple of million bucks. Three, maybe four times a year, Riley flew into L.A. on business. I always managed to see him, even if it was only to deliver his rental car. Most of the time, he was locked up in smoke-filled conference rooms. But I got to know his wife, Joan. She was the kind of woman who wanted more from marriage than a fat checking account. You know, honey, I told you before we started, this is strictly a business trip. Aren't they all? Uh, you've been acting funny ever since we left El Paso. Maybe it was a mistake to take you along in your condition. It would have been a bigger mistake to leave me behind in my condition. Now just what is that supposed to mean? I almost left you last spring, Riley. It was while you were in Tulsa on the Jennings leases. Why well, didn't you? No photograph. Two people in love. We used to be us. Right now, I, I kind of wish I could see a flying saucer. Maybe the little blue men are taking a vacation for the day. Honey, I, I guess I am away a good deal on business trips, but it's all it ever was, strictly business. I know that. If it had been anything else, I'm woman enough to fight it. But who can fight ambition? This isn't you talking, Joan, it's your condition. Riley, this has been growing longer than nine months. Everything's going to be all right once my son comes along. Oh, Riley, do you think you can patch up all the holes in our marriage with children? I've tried to be a good husband. No, you've tried to be a good provider. 
back through the years when our creditors stretched clear across the panhandle. Those were the happy years, Riley. At least then I still had a husband. You see, honey, everything's all right. Nothing's changed. Do you think an occasional kiss can cure a lifetime of loneliness? It's mighty sweet medicine, Mrs. Jackson. What good is medicine when the patient's too sick to recover? You better call Patty. That plane's late. Oh, Wes, I told you we weren't going to wait any longer. Keep your shirt on. It's coming in now. Passengers will please extinguish cigarettes and fasten seatbelts. We're coming in for a landing. Riley. Yeah? Nothing. It can wait. Joan, honey, I, I sure don't get you. I think perhaps we'd better talk about this whole thing some other time. Maybe with a lawyer. What's the matter? Can't you see that other plane? the rescue squad and it's a natural reflex. Reaction time, zero. Every wasted second doubles the odds. Odds that may spell the difference between life and death to a victim. The CO2 bottles might come in handy against fire. a veteran. There are only 45 to 60 seconds of action in an extinguisher of this size. Skip knew he had to make every inch of pressure count. If his trigger finger froze for an instant of panic, he'd be through. one 
the CO2 bottle. I sure hope that guy at the airfield had phoned for a forestry fire vehicle. Yes, this is not going to do it. we got to have more equipment fast. We've got a fire extinguisher. Have you got a line? Yeah. And when this job's done, I want some cutting tools and oxygen. Oxygen? Yeah, there ought to be some of that DC-3 I saw parked on the apron. Sure, but what do you want one for? There's a woman trapped in that plane. She might need it. Badly injured? I don't know. She looks like she might be going to have a baby any minute. We'll be back as soon as Lehman Lena can make it. Come on, Joe. My name's Kimbrough, mister. This here's my property. Maybe so, but this is an emergency. Here in the day, I count them a poultry. I'm going to the law. Look, mister, there's a woman trapped in that plane. Now get out of my way. Property owner seems like we frightened some of these poachers. That mechanic has some cutting tubes. We can't wait, Skip. We've got to free her now, somehow. Tell me, Wes, what happened? The shock of the crash. You started your wife's labor, Riley. Oh, my God. I got oh. some tools in my work shed up the ravine. I could rent them to you. Rent? Oh, go ahead. Hurry, hurry, get them. I don't care what it costs. Hurry. Rent. Pa, you horse trading while folks is in trouble? Now, you hightail it up to that shed and fetch those tools. Yeah, but, Ma. Go on and bring back some sheets. I don't care where you get them. Yeah, but, Ma. And some blankets, too. Yes, and some rubbing alcohol. If those blessed roosters of yours haven't drunk it. But, Ma. And you better leave your coat here. It may come oh, in handy. My Sunday coat? Well, then, let it serve a like Christian purpose, huh? I'm going with you. I'll make sure you get back. Uh, you all right, Riley? Come on, sit down. Oh, Joan's all that matters. How will I know that now? Go get Joan. Anything I can do, you just tell me now. We can't do much for her until we free her from that busted seat. Mr. Jackson got a badly burned hand. Riley, where's your first aid kit? Uh, under the back seat. Be careful. I think he's got a busted shoulder. Oh, man, this... Day's piled a heap of suffering on his back. Uh, Miss yes? Well, about Pa, the way he acted. Well, you don't want to pay him no mind. It's just that, well, we've lived out here so long and away from people, and, well, sometimes a man hides the good that's in him, even from himself. That's all right, ma'am. Here you are, mister. Your partner's got the rest of the stuff. Much obliged. And you should have told me they were Texas folks in the first place. Saved us all a lot of aggravation. Name's Kimbrough, mister. I'm from Salt River. Thank you very much, Mr. Kimbrough. Right there, Skip. Hold on tight, Miss. Hold on. We're coming three minutes apart now. We're gonna be all right. Hold on. 
We got back as soon as we could. Couldn't locate any cutting tools. I won't need those shovels, but I can sure use this oxygen. Let's fudge. All right, Miss. You leave, Ronnie. I'm going to tell her something. Later. She's in a lot of pain right now. Come on. But I've got to tell her before. Listen, Joan, honey. Everything's going to be all right. It'll be just the way you want it to be. I mean it. <laughs> honey, you've got to listen to me. I don't have anything if I don't have you. <sighs> Will you get back, mister? Interns or firemen or what? <laughs> Sometimes you know, I even wonder myself. But anyway, everything's all taken care of. All right, darling. You know, honey, I just found out you're the most important thing in the world to me. Those oil wells are going to have to work by themselves. From now on, my job is being a husband. Hey, we gotta think of a new name. to the airport, just like oh, you said. Oh, my father, Skip, please. It would probably sound too unbelievable anyway. <laughs> probably would at that, Patty. <laughs> oh, you two haven't met. Wes, this is Barbara. Barbara? I guess you don't need a detective to tell you who this is. <laughs> Buddy, you're now looking at our favorite nurse. Oh, if that's for you. Hello? Sure could have used you about an hour ago, Barbara. I hope that doesn't mean I've gone out of style in the meantime. Barb, it's for you. Oh. Hello? Can we still go on the picnic, Daddy? <laughs> we sure can. <clears throat> Nothing in the world to stop us now, sweetheart. Yes, right away. That was the hospital. They want me over there right away. Sorry, but it's an emergency. Premature birth. Mother was in a plane accident. Bye. 